is Serena Bombard. I'm here with Heidi Cole at Heidi's house. And it's, the date today is January 12th, 2012. And um, we're going to start off with, do you remember where you were on December 7th in 1941? Was that Pearl Harbor? Mm -hmm. I was in... What year was it now? 1941. 41. I was in Detroit on a fellowship for a semester from Cornell University at a special school for studying child development, the Merrill Palmer School in Detroit. And one of the things we had to do was entertain on Sundays, and we had these boys from General Motors over, and we were all sitting in the living room. We lived in cooperative houses when Pearl Harbor. Mm -hmm. so, and of course the boys were all wondering what's going to happen next. But I remember too that when I got back to Cornell for, for the rest of my senior year, they upped us up from the end of June to June 5th to graduate. And the boys left the next day. Okay. So you were part of the Red Cross, right? Mm -hmm. In the war? Okay, and what was your part? What did you do? Well, I went in the Red Cross and uh, but the minute you say Red Cross, people think you were a nurse. Mm -hmm. But I was a recreation worker. I went in as a recreation worker and um, I served overseas in England for 11 months and then during the occupation in Belgium for nine months. Okay. And what was the scariest part of it all? Seeing, I, I worked with army hospitals, so I saw patients. And the one that really set me up was seeing this fellow that was encased in bandages from head to toe. Just two eyes, a nose, and a mouth. But, you know, our job, well, one time one of the fellows said to me, and I was going around on, war, on rounds, he says, I don't like you. You make us feel homesick. <laughs> so, but the next day, on the bed next to him, which was empty, was, you know how you make a hat out of, you know, like that? Mm -hmm. Well, he'd done that, and he said, you're okay. <laughs> um, on that poster I brought over for you, it said that you used to play games with the Allied soldiers. What kind of games did you play with them? Well, one winter we had a ski race with pencils and marshmallows. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, you made everything. And so we drew on the floor, great big long lines with some dice. But you just, my, my job as a recreation worker was to have fun. And uh, there were times when at New Year's the officers wanted to come to our receptions because they didn't have fun at their <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, where were you when the war ended? Where was I when the war ended? Which war? World War II. <laughs> because I remember I was in England when the war in Europe supposedly entered or ended, mm -hmm. and, but our boys wouldn't celebrate because they knew they had to go on to Japan. Yeah. The, we were in an annex to the British, big British hospital, and the British soldiers, patients celebrated. They burned mattresses and mm -hmm. everything, but our boys wouldn't celebrate because they knew they had to, you know, we had to go on. Mm -hmm. And um, so then I was, I staged what they called staged for three or four months to know where I was going next. 
but then went back and operated in the same place as we had been. But I learned that I was, had I gone on, I would have been going to the China Burma India Theater. Mm -hmm. Another experience. Yeah. <laughs> what was your favorite part of what you did? Well, there were two things. I think wherever I was, I enjoyed seeing the countryside and meeting the people. And it was just trying to have fun. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, did you ever, was there ever an instance where you came really close to the enemy? Well, I was standing on the street corner in London when a bomb fell. And this little old English lady said, don't worry, dearie, it's when we can't hear them we worry. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> I remember her. I mean, I can close my eyes and, you know, hear her voice, and she said that to me. Yeah. And then a funny thing happened. I was in the dormitory where I was staying in London for a new assignment, and the bomb fell, and, this was, and I do have an upper plate which I had then, and I was brushing it, and the bomb fell, and I lost it down the drain. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the things you remember, the funny things. Mm -hmm. But this little old lady came in again, and she said, we'll get it, we'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. What, what was running through your head when bombs were going off like that? Like, Was it just a natural thing? Were you, were you used to it? We just accepted that that was what was going on. You know, mm -hmm. and um, I don't think it had much time. Now I was stationed in Wales, which was an all at that time, which was an all tent hospital. And but I was, you know, we went into London for fun. I remember these three boys took me horseback riding in London. <laughs> but. Um, It's, it's just the way it was, you know? Mm -hmm. um, what do you think, it, like, what kind of impact has it made on your life? Well, it made me realize what a treasure friendship was, mm -hmm. is, was then and is. I still am in touch with one or two people that I knew in World War II. Mm -hmm. Many have since died. I've been lucky, mm -hmm. being 91. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it it was um, it was an experience, mm -hmm. and I'm glad I had it. Yeah. What made you decide? Did you decide that you were going to be in it, or were you placed in? the Red Cross, like with the recreation all that, or was no. that your decision? Actually, I was doing professional Girl Scout work at the time in Syracuse, and this lady came and visited, and she stayed with me for a week, and she was in the waves, and their uniform was so neat, and I decided that I wanted to do that, and so I applied. But I was turned down. Now, this is another funny story. I didn't have enough teeth in my mouth. When I was seven, eight, nine years old, I had to have teeth extracted. And of course, my jaw grew together. So I didn't have the right number. Well, the, the commanding officer that interviewed me, he was ready to quit himself because he was so mad. But you know, it worked for me because I learned from him that he had me. He wanted to put me in a job in Washington, D.C., and I wanted to go overseas. Mm -hmm. So my boss at the time said, go across the street and sign up with the Red Cross. And I did in two weeks' time. I was in the Red Cross. Mm -hmm. And after training in Washington, D.C., at American University, I was sent overseas. How did your family feel about it? Were they very supportive of it? Or? Very. Yeah, yeah, my brother and sister. I mean, at that time, I was taking care, helping with my mother's finances. My father had died. Mm -hmm. And um, 
you know, they were both married and had families, but they said, we, you know, mother wasn't in dire need. And they said, we can take care of her, you go and do what you want, so. Um, is there any events that stick out clearly in your mind? Anything that happened that you think about often or? Well, I think of the fun I had yeah. while serving, you know. So mostly pretty good memories. And um, wherever I was, I, I think because of my Girl Scout experiences, I did two things. I was able to use volunteers. I knew how to work with them. And also, um, I looked up girl guides wherever I was. And that was fun. Mm -hmm. I'm still doing that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so I see you have some things out here. What do we have? Well, this is this was the formal picture of me when I went in the Red Cross. And this was in England on top of a hillside in the Isle of Wight, 1943. You could just see things that we did. And this was in Belgium. We had a Christmas party for the children in town. That's cool. <laughs> and as I said, I in the beginning, the hospital I was with was an all-tent hospital in Wales. When I ended up, it was in a big brick modern building that the Germans had built but had never occupied it. So it was from out in the countryside to the city. Mm -hmm. but, um, for me it was friendship, travel, service, I can remember my first boss in professional scouting in Syracuse before the war telling me that service is the rent you pay for the place you occupy on earth. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so you you were in England, you said, right? Mm -hmm. so I was that... in England for 11 months. Okay, and then where were you? Belgium. Belgium? During okay. the occupation. And you did the same thing in both places, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. was, did you like England or Belgium better? I just loved to travel. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, the, they, people ask you that question all the time. What do you like best? You don't. At least I don't. I yeah. like everything. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, um, I treasure the experiences I've had. Yeah. All right. Um, do you recall when FDR died? Do you remember that at all? Yes, vaguely. Mm -hmm. I, I was in, um, I think I was still in England at 91. It's yeah. Going <laughs> <laughs> um, but I don't remember now much about no. it. Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> Um, how did you feel about Japan, how they were going to, you know, go to war after the war in Europe, they were going to head for Japan? How did you feel about that? I don't know. I had a very good friend from scouting, from camp, and so on, Syracuse, who went in the wax when I went in the Red Cross. And um, she was on the Missouri, was it? The ship? Where the treaties were signed. Yeah, I think so. And she was there. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> but um, it was just another phase we hoped would yeah. happen and did. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so you did you make a lot of friends? A lot. Yeah. A yeah. Lot. Um, you know, a lot of the patients. They liked it best if you gave him a nickname. Mm -hmm. I remember this one boy, we called him Donuts, because he always came. <laughs> <laughs> and years, maybe a year after he was in our hospital, at a 
motor pool out in the country. In, it was either France or Germany. And I was there at that motor pool, pulled up to, in this ambulance. We all rode by ambulance, wasn't it? We were sick, but that was mm -hmm. our transportation. And out comes the soldier, and he said, Hi! And I said, Oh, donuts! <laughs> You know, you never knew when you were going to run into them again. Uh -huh. And one of the things that I did in the hospitals was to deliver newspapers. Mm -hmm. So I made that a fun thing, you know, calling out Detroit Free Press, San Francisco. <laughs> and they thought that was fun. And it was fun because you learned a lot about where the, your patients were from and so on. It was an exciting time. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have any? That could be enough. How? What's the time at? Forty-four. So like, <clears throat> when I hit twenty, it'll be forty minutes. I mean, twenty minutes. Okay. Uh, let's see. What one did I not ask? Uh, her feelings toward the enemy today. Mm -hmm. How do you feel towards the enemy today? I don't think I take time to think about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I have time to read. I didn't have time to do that then. And when I was your age, you know, or in college. So now I'm reading, I'm reading, I'm reading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just read the book on Jacqueline Kennedy that uh, just came out. But right now, Living here in a senior development is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, my son who is retired, that's what makes me realize my age. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he comes, fills my pill bottles, makes sure I'm taking everything, calls <laughs> me every day. But I enjoy having him to dinner because he knows so many people. Mm -hmm. Having worked at the library, Crandall Library, oh. and uh, you know for almost thirty years, and so it's fun and striking up a conversation with people can lead you to so many exciting things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So did you, while you were in England or in Belgium, did you know about the things that were going on with like the concentration camps and stuff like that? Did you know about that? No, not until later when I went. I visited concentration camps when I went back later. Mm -hmm. I have returned to Europe several times, mm -hmm. mostly through Girl Scouting. But it was the first time I went to one and they showed a movie. It was heart-wrenching. Mm -hmm. It really was. And I have done a lot of reading on them. Mm -hmm. It's a shame we had to go through it. Yeah. it really is. On the other hand, where would we be if we didn't yeah. fight it? Mm. But I, I think people your age should read some of those things too to know what went on and sometimes why people feel like they do. Mm -hmm. and, uh, <laughs> Anything I've been able to do since I graduated from college, I attribute to two things. Growing up in Sunday school and Girl Scouting, they gave me values, taught me, gave me many opportunities and experiences to grow on, and um, I figure I was very lucky, mm -hmm. and uh, I know at times Girl Scouting for seniors, you know, they it's not a popular thing, but I was lucky not only did I continue through seniors, my troop was Girl Scout 13, <laughs> 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 our senior troop was 13, but we in the high school I went to, 
we had sororities and fraternities. Like I was almost like college, but it was high school. And our Girl Scout troop was on the same level as sororities. We had to do a service project every year, but we had our pictures in the yearbook with our uniforms on. So I was lucky. And I wish the same for girls today. Mm -hmm. And um, But it certainly gave me a lot in Sunday school too. Anything else I can tell you about me? <laughs> Let's see. Is there anything you want to tell us? Is there well, one year, you want to tell me? a long time ago, 71, I was honored by the BPW, Business and Professional Women's Group in, in Hudson Falls as Citizen of the Year. Congratulations. Wow. Yeah. You are a superstar. Got this little tray. <laughs> <laughs> These things keep popping up, you know. Mm -hmm. And um, the Girl Scouting. I'm still a Girl Scout. Still attend meetings, but they Aww. come and get me and bring me home. <laughs> and uh, Girl Scouts have a new part of the organization called the Pearl Legacy Society. And I'm one of the early members of that, just a few, a year or so ago. Mm -hmm. So, I collect all these things, but you don't know what to do with them then. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm proud of them. And, uh, Girl Scouting and and church are still giving me what they gave me in the beginning. Mm -hmm. so. Other than that, I don't know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can share anything else with you. Um, My granddaughter it? just got married. Aww. <laughs> That's exciting. Oh, she, it's been a year. She's beautiful. Almost mm -hmm. two years. But she just lost twin girls. She's young. Yeah. <laughs> what is the saying when life throws you lemons, make, make lemonade? lemonade. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sums it up.